Hey everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about panic attacks because I personally have been suffering from panic attacks since I was eight years old. And when I was eight, I knew nothing about them. Shocking, I was a small child. I realize that panic attacks are more talked about today, but I feel like a lot of people have misconceptions about them. Think about panic attacks as like one form of panic attacks and don't really know about how it can affect different people in different ways. Personally, I have had three forms of panic attacks that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm gonna talk about those today. I'm gonna dive in with the first type of panic attack I have had, the most common one I experience. Actually, no, it's not the most common one I experience. It's the one I've experienced the longest, and that is probably the most stereotypical panic attack, which is well, I'm gonna like label the hysteric panic attack. So this is the panic attack where you just start feeling it in your chest, in my experience. Um, you start feeling that need to cry and it just starts building and building. For me, it turns into usually sobs. Um, I feel like I can't breathe. It is, I've had people compare it, people have seen it with me, compare it to finding out like a loved one has died. And what's terrifying about it is once it starts, it's really, really hard for me to shut it down until it runs its course, which I never know how long it's gonna be. Um, I've had hysteric panic attacks last four to five hours. So imagine being in that state of panic and just sobbing for four to five hours without even having like a solid cause for it. Sometimes with panic attacks, I will have a solid cause. I'll know exactly why I'm panicking. Those are usually more helpful to me because it's easier to shut them down in my experience because I can either logic my way out of them sometimes. Um, that's really rare with a panic attack, being able to logic out. Or I can try to like resolve the situation in some way, shape or form. More times than not, there isn't like one concrete cause and I either have to just let it run its course or if I can get myself into a position where I can get one of my Xanax that I have to stop the panic attack, I can take it and my body will start shutting it down, which hallelujah for Xanax for those of us who need it. One of the upsides and downsides for this kind of panic attack is the people around you see it and hopefully will be respectful of it. The problem is that even those that are respectful of it don't always know how to react to it. In my case, unless you are one of the closest people in my life, I want you to leave me alone. I usually, if, it's hap if I feel it coming on in public, I dart to a bathroom so I can be in a stall so people kind of have to leave me alone. Um, I hate the attention of panic attacks. They are still super stigmatized. Uh, so I try to avoid people noticing them in any way, shape, or form, which I think is why I started having panic attack number two, which I call the dissociation panic attack. I started dissociating about two years ago. Dissociating is a horrible, horrible <laughs> symptom of mental illness. In my experience with it, I don't really leave my body as much as some people do, but I literally cannot communicate. I cannot talk. I notice everything around me to a certain extent, but it seems foggy and I can form words in my head, but I can't get them out of my mouth. So it's usually I start dissociating and then I start panicking. Now, I do believe one of the reasons it started is because I'm so afraid of having hysteric panic attacks in public. So this is the way my body can panic but there's absolutely no way anyone's gonna know what's going on because unless someone's trying to talk to me and then they usually just get annoyed because they're like, why isn't she responding? No one's gonna notice anything's wrong with me because I'm just silent. If they get to their worst, I can't even move sometimes, which is, which is the best. Um, externally, it's the calmest thing in the world. Internally, it is the most terrifying thing in the world. I. It's like sirens going off in your brain. It's really hard to describe this one. I mean, I almost wanna compare it even though there's no way I could compare it because I've never had this happen clearly, but it's like electrocuting in your brain or 
I guess it would be like a horrible, horrible trip with no drug inducing it. That I guess would be the best and you can't verbalize it in any way, shape or form. The third, and this one was the most terrifying just cause I didn't know what it was, would be my physical panic attack. This only happened once and I was hospitalized. And of course the hospital did not diagnose this. It was years later I was talking with a therapist and they're like, you had a panic attack. And I was like, I mean, that would have been nice to find out at the ER instead of having x-rays taken for no reason. I moved into a dorm at 18 and I think it was my second or third night there. Third? Third. I started feeling really, really hot and sick. Now, I had no drugs. I had nothing to, like, drink that night. I was clean as a whistle. I just wanted to sleep so I could go to class in the morning. I was texting a friend. Um, and I remember I started texting him, and I was like, I feel so sick right now. I don't know what's going on. Like, maybe I have food poisoning. Um, and I could feel my temperature rising. So I went, and I got a cold washcloth, and I put it over my head. At this point, it was probably midnight. I just could not sleep. And then all of a sudden, I just remember running to the bathroom. I've never projectile vomited in my life. I don't think most people have projectile vomited in their life. I projectile vomited that night. Um, just so much. Thankfully, I got it all into a clean area and, like, there was no cleanup for my roommate. Somehow my roommate slept through all of this. Um... So, I called the RA. The RA come over, come over, came over, and they started panicking because they were convinced I was having an overdose. Everyone's reaction to panic attacks seems to be overdose. Um, so they called the fire department because we had a fire department on campus. That's normal. The fire department came over and they just kept pounding me with, "What did you take? What did you drink?" Like, what are you overdosing on? And that, like, they were so angry with me. I was basically getting yelled at because they were convinced that I was overdosing and I wasn't giving them what I was overdosing on, so I was going to die. Um, so that just made me panic more because I'm like, what's happening? So eventually they call the paramedics because I won't give them the answers they want. And I get rushed to the hospital. The hospital draws blood, puts an IV. They don't put an IV. They stick me. I have a major, major needle phobia. Super needle phobia. I get stuck three times in this arm, three times in this arm. They put it in my hand, I think, once when my mom walks in because I called her on the way. And I'm just in hysterics at this point because of the needles. And she's like, why are you sticking my daughter? And they're like, she's going to dehydrate from all the vomiting. And she, like, feels inside my cheek. My mom's a vet tech. And she's like, my daughter is not dehydrated, get her ice chips. And they're like, okay, fine. Because clearly this woman can't put a line in to save her life. Um, they do x-rays, they run the blood, nothing's wrong with me. They send me home. I end up dropping out of that school because I send an email to like all my professors telling them I was in the hospital until I think 4 or 5 a.m. Um, my mom brings me all the way back to our house, which is an hour away from school. So I can't get to class at 9 a.m. And w one of the teachers literally responded with, you can have this one day off, but you better have a doctor's note if you miss another class this semester. You're gonna fail. And I was like, why, thank you. As a freshman, I really appreciate this. But yeah, so that's the third type. Physical ones, I feel like, are the least talked about. Um, the fact that even the hospital didn't know what was going on with me scares me. Because I feel like there are probably a lot more people who have had experiences like that and might not even know what was happening with them so if you've had an experience like this please comment below i would love to talk with other people who have had like physical panic attacks uh because i have only talked with one other person who has like vomited from panic before and they had no idea what's happening to them either like i told them my therapist told me like that's a panic attack and i was like you don't say so I'd love to meet more people who have had panic attacks like me. If you have any kind of panic attacks, feel free to comment below. Let's make a panic attack posse. Um, like this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to me for more mental health videos. Because apparently I do this now, even though this is absolutely terrifying. Um, I will see you next week.
and I hope you have a great week. <laughs> Bye.